ladies, this is Carla. Thank you for joining me today. Today I have a fun little project. It brings me back to my childhood a little bit, and I bet it will for most of you too. Um, as we all know, this Saturday is May 1st, and when I was a little girl, we used to make May Day baskets and deliver them to houses in our little rural neighborhood. So I thought that might be a fun thing for me to kind of include my granddaughter and one of her little friends in and kind of introduce them to that tradition. And so that's what we're gonna do today is make two different styles of little May baskets. Now what I used, I went to Joann's and their um, cardstock right now is on sale for 50% off. So these sheets that I bought were 79 cents and uh, got them 50% off. And I got this pattern, if you can see that. Um, hold on, I'm gonna try to get my lighting a little better. Okay, I hope that's a little better. All right, uh, so anyway, I got this pattern. I got it in this pink, and it's just single-sided, and I got it in a blue, and I got it in a yellow. So that is uh, for one style that we're gonna be making. What I did then, I took my 12 by 12 sheet, I put it on my Cricut and I made an eight by eight inch scallop square. Now you would not have to scallop it. You could just make an eight by eight inch square and do the same thing. Now what I had left from this, I went into my Cricut and I made three different sizes of flowers. I just positioned this, I cut this off and positioned these at the top of my Cricut and I made these little flowers, I made this size, and then I made this size, and then out of the yellow, well, I mean, I made them out of all different colors, but those are the three different sizes that I made that they could use to decorate with. So I've got those in this little container, so when I set everything out for them, they'll have that right at their little fingertips. Now for the other style I made, I used paper from Plush Peonies that I got at Michael's as one of their hot buys. And that was just recently and they have, as I showed you during one of my hauls, have beautiful, beautiful paper. And so that's gonna be the other style. Now. To get started, I'm gonna use my mat because I might be using some hot glue. And this little mat, some people have asked where I got it. And I got this on Amazon. It's by Westcott. I think it was $9.97 or something like that. And I love it to glue on because then I can just wipe it off and it doesn't mess up my mat. Okay, so I also went on my Cricut and I went into uh, some of my designs. I found a scallop circle that I liked and made it and took my text, made Happy May Day, put a couple little flowers on it and did that on print and cut. Cut those out so they could use those. And then I went for a little more colorful, fun one, did the same thing, went in on my designs, picked out the one I wanted and did it on my print and cut. So those are ready to go. The other thing that you'll need is I picked up, oh, three of these ribbons at uh, Joann's. They were buy two, get one free, and I thought those colors kind of went with the papers I bought. Then when I was at um, Hobby Lobby, they had theirs, of course, 50% off, but I really couldn't find, they were really low on yellow and I couldn't find the right kind of blue. So hopefully we'll have enough ribbon to get through all these and I think we will. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna take, I'm gonna need my art glitter glue. I'm gonna need my hole punch. I think this is an eighth inch hole punch. Might need some scissors. I've got a little bit of trim here that I might be using and some little decorative Jimmy Dots we might be using. And I've got um, just some Dollar Tree flowers to kind of show you how, you know, we can put flowers in there. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna turn it over 
And I'm going to kind of roll this because this is really nice um, cardstock that I got at Joann's. It's very heavy and it's a little hard to roll. And I'll, I'll tell you, the scallop makes it a little harder <laughs> to get that shape you want, but it's okay. And then down here, I'm going to just kind of take this in together to show me where the center of this little scallop down here is going to be. I'm just going to kind of crease that a little bit, just like that. And then I'm going to take it, and I'm just going to bend it up a little. And I don't know if any of these turned out the same down here, and it really doesn't matter because you're going to be, you know, folding it and making it pretty. I don't think anyone's going to go down there and examine that little tip but like i said if you were doing a square it would be a little easier i think so with that done i'm gonna just glue that we're gonna take it and try to find where that center point was and kind of just get that going and we want this to roll around so i'm just gonna kind of work that a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and use my ATC gun. You could use glue, but actually, I think I'm going to reinforce it with glue. That's what I did on my others because since this is a stiffer cardstock and you are rolling it, we wouldn't want that tape to come undone. I'm just adding a little bit of extra in here. Maybe some over there. And... I'm gonna add a little bit of glue down here. And I'll tell you, I you probably have to take more than one shot at this because this paper's so stiff, which is good in the long run, but just a little harder to roll. So we're just gonna try to keep this thin down here. Keep this, we may have to pull it apart. Oh, that's not too bad. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, my bottom isn't real good. Okay, we're going to, if I pull this up, it makes that tighter down here. So I'm gonna pull that up. But at the same time, you want that point to come to the center. And that's not quite tight enough. I don't think that is either. That's not bad. Let's let's take a look, see how far off we are. Rub that in there. Oh, that's good. That works. See, you've got that. It's pretty even. You've got your scallop going down the side. And like I said, down here, if that bothers you, what I have been doing is I will take some glue and I will put right here where that little opening is there. It's not as tight as you want. And then I just take a clothespin. You can tell they're glued together. There we go. <laughs> I just take a clothespin. Oops, get that back in there. Kind of fold that over. And we're just gonna clamp that down like so. Grab a cloth. Gonna wipe off some of that excess glue there. There. Now we're just gonna roll that around. And there, that looks great, don't you think? And now for this one, I'm gonna go ahead, while that's kind of drying that way, I'm gonna take my eighth inch punch. I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna come down probably on this. Here's the top, one, two, top, one, two. Go down to that third scallop. Come in there. I want it to go in pretty good. Punch that, and punch this, looks pretty even. Okay, I'm gonna take, for this one, let's see, we'll take some pink ribbon. And I cut it about, let's see, where's the end of this? I cut it about 16 inches. So I'm gonna measure out about 16 inches. There we go. And I'm just going to cut that. Okay. And then I'm 
gonna take a point right here where I have my hole. I'm just gonna try to stick that little point in there. Pull that through. And I'm gonna make a knot on the outside of it. I'm gonna pull that up, give myself just enough room so I can tie a knot. I'm not gonna pull it real tight because I want that to be what holds the ribbon and keeps it from going through. So that will be on the outside, just like so. And then we're gonna take this. You kinda of wanna watch a little bit so it doesn't get twisted, but if it would, that would be okay too. I'm gonna take that point again, poke it through that hole, and pull it through. We're going to make another knot toward the end here. I'm just doing it one time because I don't think it needs to. I think this is holding it. And then you've got your little ribbon that you're going to place on the door handle. Now, this down here, let's see. I'm going to put it on at a little bit different angle, I think. Still not quite dry. Okay. Leave that on. Then I'm just going to take this like so. Now, I'm going to take on this one, I'm going to take the colorful one. And I'm going to glue it at the top. So I'm going to take my art glitter glue. I'm just going to put it here. It's okay if it kind of hangs up. I'll try to get centered. So I'll put it down here and try to get it centered just so. That looks good. And then I'm going to bring my flowers over. And for this one, I think I'm going to put, I think I'll do a big yellow one in the back. And then let's do, I already made one and I used, do I want pink again? Or do we want blue? I think we'll do blue. Give it some contrast. Take a little art little glue, put it right here. Move these out of the way now. I'm gonna take this little flower, try to center it up. You could either make it, you know, like this, or the petals are just like that, or you can make them kind of alternate. I think I'm gonna make mine alternate. And I'm gonna pull this here. I'm gonna glue that right under there. And put that on. Let's see where we want this. About right there looks good. And then I'm going to take one of my jimmies over here. Okay, this is pink, yellow, and blue. I think I'm going to take the bright pink. Put that on. I have lots of these in my stash. It's nice to be using some of these, and I think the girls will love it. So I've got one of those. I'm gonna add a little dot of glue right there, right there in the center. And then I'm gonna put this right there. Gonna let that dry a little bit. Now to show you that could possibly look with flowers. Like I said, I've got some Dollar Tree artificial flowers here that I'm just gonna poke down in there. But let me tell you what I did. Um, I called a local nursery here and they have a floor shop and a little boutique in their nursery. And so they used to, at one time, I know they had what they called Saturday flowers, and that would be flowers that had kind of, kind of lost their prime, and they would discount those and sell them at a discount on Saturdays. So I called them, and he said, right now, he really didn't have any, but he was so nice. He said he was going to put a bucket out, because I told him what they were for, and I said, you know, we have quite a few. I think we have like 17 little uh, baskets to do. And I told him that, you know, I, I really couldn't afford to buy enough flowers to put in 
all of those. And so, you know, I'd be willing to buy some that were a little past their prime at a discount if he had any. And he was so nice. He said he was going to put a bucket out and any that he came across that he didn't think looked, you know, good enough for his um, arrangements or whatever, he would just put in that bucket and Friday I can come over and pick out what I want. So that sounded like a good deal to me. And I know also we have Walmart and sometimes they have, you know, those bouquets that are not that expensive and sometimes you can get quite a few in there but when I went to my Walmart uh, yesterday all of those were cleared out but I figured maybe they were getting ready to get some fresh ones in for Mother's Day so I don't know that for sure but maybe that's what's going on. Okay, I'm going to take this off again and if I have to put it back on there that's not a problem. I think I am because I'm not satisfied with that. But I'm going to take a little bit of tissue to fill down in here. And I'm going to put tissue in there, just like so. And then I have these flowers. Like I said, I had gotten that Dollar Tree. And I just keep vases of these in my crafting area. They look pretty. And then if I need flowers for anything... You know, I've already got them right there. And, you know, you could do these if you didn't have real flowers or didn't have access. I know when I was a little girl, we made ours. Um, we used to get strawberries. I don't know if they still put them in that. They were little green plastic basket-looking things. And we would take ribbon or whatever and kind of weave through that. And our lilac tree seemed to always be blooming at that time of year. So we'd pick little lilacs, and then we would put, like, uh, mints and uh, gum. Little, We'd buy packs of gum down at the little general store. And we would, you know, undo those and put little sticks of gum and little mints in there. And we had the most fun going around and leaving those on doors and saying May Day, and you know, in our little town, that was kind of a tradition, so people knew what to expect, and so, you know, hopefully, I may warn a few people that if you see a little girl coming up, knocking on your door and running, it's, go look at your front door, because I know a lot of people, they just go through their garage, and they don't necessarily go through their front door, but I would like to keep this tradition alive, so there is one and here's one that I had made previously. And you can see I've added some candy. I don't know if I can get this higher up so you can kind of see all of that. And so that is one style. Now I'm going to show you another style. Now this style I made on my Cricut. Back down here and get in focus. There we go. Now, on my Cricut, <clears throat> I went in and I looked for a door hanger with a pocket. So, this is what I found. So, I cut this out, and first it will score it all for you. And then it cuts out a layer. So, from my, um, what was it called? Plush Peonies uh, paper pad from Michael's. <clears throat> I chose this real soft pink white polka dot and then this peonies layer piece to go over it. So the first thing we want to do here is go ahead and layer this on here. So we want to get some glue going around this. And I just uh, think this is a really clever idea, but I don't think the girls would have had as much to decorate or do with this because there's no ribbon and and I would have to spend a lot more time cutting it out so I kind of went with the other ones and these are kind of small but they're cute they're really cute I may have a special couple a uh, couple of special people that I'll give this to oops I almost put that on the wrong side we want to put this on the back side okay so we want to put this on the white side if you had double-sided paper, that would be great. And you want to place it right around those edges and right around these score lines. I don't know if you can see those, but it scores this. It's kind of a pillow box type of a pocket on there. 
So we've got that. And now I want to fold this score line here. And this was a little tricky getting this folded all. I'm going to say, so I'm going to fold it like this first. And see if we can kind of get these going just in that score line. If we get them going, you know, we can always flip them the other way. So this one, not quite. Let's get up in there a little bit. There we go. And it's going to flip this way. Down there, that little score line. And this paper isn't quite as sturdy, but I like it. I think it's fine as the uh, Joanne's paper. See, this little corner I had a little trouble with when I made one because you really need to get right up in there. Okay, I think I got it. Well, pretty good, pretty good. All right, let's come over here now. We want to do the same thing with this one. Kind of go in there and try to crease it on that little score line it made for you. And it's looking pretty good. If we keep it right up here where that needs to be kind of perfect. <laughs> okay, now let's see what happens if we fold this and we fit this together. Oh, I'm liking it. That looks pretty good. Before we do that, I think we want to go ahead and glue this down, and I'm going to use, um, no, I think I'll just go ahead and use it. I said I was going to use score tape, but I think this is fine. This glue is really good. It holds very well. It's strong. So I'm going to fold this. I'm going to want that one to go like that. So we're going to just take this, kind of fit that in there. We want this little fold to fit right up in here where this is folded. Get right up in there. Come on in. And if it's not totally stuck down there in that corner, I think it'll be okay. I don't think I can get up in there. There, maybe I can. Well, having a little trouble. Let's hold that. I'm gonna take a boom folder, maybe. Let's get this stuck. I can get this stuck. I can go in there and manipulate that little corner a little bit. Let's just hold this on there a minute. Like so. Let's see. I'm going to put a little more glue in here. Then I am going in. All right. I'm going to have to hold this so I can see where I'm going here. Okay. Take my cloth and kind of hold that. So how many of you did Mayday Baskets when you were growing up? I'd be curious to know if you could leave that in my comment section. Just think, you know, we're losing some of our little traditions and just ways, you know, to show people you care. That glue on my fingers. Now I'm going to come, see if this will fold out. Got that one in there. Pretty good. You can see that's in there pretty good. Now I'm just going to add glue to this one. I'm going to let this... I'm going to put a little clamp on that, maybe. No, I don't think I can do that the way it's set up there. But it's okay. Let's go ahead, and we're going to get glue on this little flap right here. And we 
we're just gonna fold this up in. We have it creased. And if it doesn't wanna go all the way up in there, we can take a bone folder or something and go down in there to get that to stick. But this is the back side, and I think it will be fine. You know, I was thinking for my granddaughter and her little friend, I'm gonna set up a table down stairs close to my crafting area. I'm gonna put all their little supplies on there and just kind of show them an example. And then I'm just gonna turn them loose. I'm gonna put some little snacks down there, after school snacks, and take pictures of them and might even make them a little May Day memory book. Because when you're making memories, if you don't catch, capture them, they're gone. And they grow so fast. Okay, I think I'm satisfied with that. But it still needs to dry a little bit. All right, so I'm going to take that. And then I cut out this piece also. Cuts out on your Cricut with the back. So I'm going to take some glue. And I'll adhere this. Okay, right here. You know, I'm not sure I made my lighting better or worse. Cause I hope this is not real dark. Okay. Let's add that on. I need to move that over a little bit. Come on, here we go. Just a little bit over. Oops. There we go. That looks good. All right. Now we're going to put that on there. And next thing we want to do. Is I'm gonna take a piece of this trim. I purchased this at Hobby Lobby a long time ago. All right, I moved that light. I'm not sure I had it in the best place after all. And so um, I'm gonna cut off a little piece of that to add to the front. And here we go here, excuse me. I'm going to take a little hot glue to get that on. Pull that out just a little bit right here in the middle. Won't take much, a little on each little petal there on the outside of it. get that centered to the top mm -hmm. that looks pretty good pretty pretty and this is a little rosette that I had received in a swap. And I just think it's darling. And it was from Kathy's Creative Crafts and More. And it's just darling. So I'm going to take that. And I had made this bow. And I'm going to attach the bow to that. And I'm going to attach it on top of that. So I have a little hot glue. Add my little bow down there as straight as I can. And then I'm going to attach that to the center of my little rose in here. Let's see if we get that up. Oh, that's sweet. And then I'm going to take this. Um, this more, more subtle 
softer, happy May day. I'm going to attach it to this side right here. So let's see. Let's do that with glue, hot glue, just to make sure it's on there. I'm going to take that. I'm going to put that kind of at an angle in there. And then I think I may take, let's see, I've got some little pearl jimmies here. I like these hot pink ones better, I think. And, okay, let's take one of these. Okay, that's sticky. Well, it's stuck. <laughs> let's put, let's see, I'll put one here. Like that, and I might put another one on the side, kind of right here. These are the ones that have that strip of adhesive on the back, but uh, oh. They're a real booger to tear apart, so I usually just take them off of that and glue them on. Okay, we'll put two there. That's pretty. I was going to put two down here, but I don't think it really needs it. I think we'll just do that. Okay, so what I would do with that then is put the flowers in the candy. Now, here's one that I've already made. And let me raise this up a little bit. You can see those maybe a little better. Some light over here. There, maybe. So here's one that I had already made. And I think there's a just going to be darling. And like I said, I'm gonna go Friday and get some Friday flowers and put those in. But if you didn't, you know, couldn't get fresh flowers, I think putting these little Dollar Tree flowers in there is adorable. And then here are the other two. I'm gonna take this clothespin off. And that's pretty good down there now. So here are the other two. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And if you used to do this but haven't done it for a while, how fun would this be for, you know, a, a granddaughter, a daughter, or just you, you know, just to bring back some of those traditions that we just don't have anymore. So anyway, this Saturday will be May Day, and hopefully we're supposed to have really nice weather we're going to get out and wish all of our neighbors a happy May Day. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have not had a chance to subscribe, I would appreciate your subscription. And until next time, bye-bye.